Здравствуйте всем, меня зовут Джеред, и я делаю русский язык легким. Hey everybody, my name is Jared, and I make the Russian language easy. И сегодня будем говорить о русском алфавете. And today we're going to talk about the Russian alphabet. Here it is, all 33 letters, and I know initially when you look at it, it seems a little overwhelming, but let me tell you, it's not as hard as you think. First of all, there are 10 letters which have the same character and the same sound as they do in English. Another three letters don't have any sound at all. They just change the preceding letter sound a little bit. And you can also thank Lenin because he eliminated four letters from their alphabet during the 1917 revolution. Kind of weird, huh? Can you imagine if we elected a new president and he said, okay, we're getting rid of the letter C because we can use S and K whenever we want. We can all adapt to that, but it'd be a little different. Okay, to make this video really effective, I want to highly suggest that you go to my website and you download the PDF that I've created about the Russian alphabet. It's a free download. It's linked in the show notes below. And what I would recommend, I know we don't really print things out anymore, but if you have that capability, download it, print it out, and then just make little notes to each letter there. And then at the same time, when you get access to that freebie, you get access to all my freebies there. But I also have some flashcards and it'll have the whole alphabet, one letter for each sound. And after this video, after we go through the pronunciation, you can download those flashcards. Again, they're free and you can memorize the alphabet that way. When we're done, if you're really good and you can really remember those numbers, you should be able to know what my shirt says. You know what it says right now? If not, you'll know at the end of this video. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this first letter is A. A as in awesome. B. B as in best. V. Okay, so our B makes their V. And that is kind of how I remember it. B equals V. They kind of rhyme, right? So B equals V. V as in vest. G. G as in guess. D. D as in den. And the reason I have these both up here, you see this written in a few different ways, once on the left and once on the right. Sometimes you'll just see it written as a triangle on their license plates. Um, they just have a triangle there. So if you ever see the triangle, know that that's their D or their D. Yeah. Now, if I remember correctly, I forget how many, but I think there's four different E's in the Russian alphabet, and this is one of them. They all make a different sound, so don't worry about it, but it's like we have E, soft E, long E, and things like that. They have that as well, but they have different letters for it. It's not an E, but it's a Y, as in yes. It's important to get that Y sound at the beginning there. Y, yes, yo, yo, like yoke, Z. Je. This is a hard one. We don't have an exact equivalent, but you know how we don't say pleasure, right? We say pleasure. It's always kind of got that je sound. That's the sound that this makes. Pleasure. Sometimes you'll see this written kind of like a star. It's an X with a vertical line through it. Je. Z. Z. As in zen. Here's another one of their E's. This would be equivalent to our long E. E. Mm. As in eat. Okay, this is one of the three letters that doesn't get a sound. It's an ikrakoya. Just know that when you see this E with the little hook above it there, it's probably changing the preceding vowel sound a little bit, or it's indicating something else. We'll get into that later. Don't worry about it right now. Ikratkoya. The next 10 letters, they all come in the same order and have the same sounds as they have in the English alphabet. They may have slightly different characters, but they have the same sounds. So I'm going to go over each one of these individually, but I wanted to point them out to you. So if you're memorizing the alphabet, you know this kind of middle block, these middle 10 letters follow the same sound as the English, right? It's K L M N O P E R S T U, or in English, K L M N O P no Q. R-S-T-U. So let's go through each one of those individually now. K, as in car. L, as in lemon. And again, this is two different ways which they write it. Sometimes you'll see it like a little TP there, and sometimes you'll see it with a little hook like a skyscraper there. In cursive, there's a little hook to the L, and it's very important. We're not teaching cursive in this video. It's just the print, so just know that you see them two different ways here. L, as in Lemon. M. M as in mom. Same as in English. N. N as in Nana. 
There's another one you need to remember. Our H's are their N's. I like to think of it that I'm high on Nana. My Nana was my mom's mom growing up and she was super cool. So I think of it as I'm high on Nana. H equals N. O. Near. Ah. As in hope or off. And the only key to know about this one is if the O is stressed, it makes the O sound. That's like the long O in English. When it's not stressed, it makes the aw ah sound, as in off. Pe. Pe, as in papa. Er. This R is rolled. Maybe not as much as they do in French, but there is one or two trills in there. It's not er. It's er. Er. Like ruski. If you say Russian, ruski. Ruski, and I'm overemphasizing that trill there, but ruski, if you hear the little tongue trill there. S, s, as in soccer. T, t, as in tot. U, as in boo. U. It's just kind of the FH sound. They don't say F, they say phone. <laughs> Now, this, this is kind of like our X, right? It's it's like the H in ha, ha. We don't say ha. There's a li it's, it's in the back part of the throat there. Ha. It's not hard to say. It's hard to explain, but I think you get what I'm saying. This makes the T-S sound, as in treats. So in English, we would almost kind of consider that two sounds, the T-S, but in Russian, it's kind of a T, T, T. The T-S sound is in treats. Chair. Ch, ch. The way I remember this one is this looks like an upside down chair. If you were to flip this around, it, it looks like a chair. So it just makes our CH sound. Ch, ch, as in chair. Sh, sh, as in shop. It's just our straight up SH sound. Sh. And this, again, we would consider it two sounds, but it's the SH and the CH English sounds combined together, like fresh cheese. So if you were to say fresh cheese as one word, fresh cheese. Sh -ch. Sh -ch. And they're not super pronounced. It's not like sh -ch. I'm over pronouncing them a little bit here so you can see it, but it's run together as one sound. Sh -ch. Sh -ch. Sh -ch. Okay, it comes in the middle of words. It's hard for non-native speakers to recognize it at first. The Russians can hear it. You'll get used to it with time. Okay, here's one that has no sound. This is the hard sign or the tfyordis nank. Tfyor, tfyordi, which in Russian means hard and znak is the Russian word for sign. So it's the hard sign. Tfyordi znak. Tfyordi znak. This is probably my favorite letter in the Russian language. This one in zh, I don't know why, I just, I've always kind of liked it. Some people call it the 61 because it kind of looks like a 61, but it's the uy, uy. I like to teach it this way, kind of, you'll see at the bottom there, start with toy, right? T-O-Y, change it to T-U-Y, T, and then drop the T. So instead of toy, you go to T, and then you just go to uy. I think that'll help you. Here's the other one. Uh, it gets no sound. Um, this is the miyaki znak. And you remember the tfyordi znak, right? Had that little kind of horizontal line at the top. That was the hard sign. This one doesn't have that line. And it's the soft sign. Miyaki znak. Miyaki znak. Eh sound as in men. Not the ye, right? The, our normal looking e is ye, right? This e is just a straight up Eh. Eh. And here's a little interesting fact about this letter. You will only ever see it at the beginning of a word, and the majority of the time, it's only used in foreign words. Not always, but usually. Eh. Men. You. You. Just as if you were to say, are you going to the store? It's that same kind of you sound. And the last letter of the alphabet is ya as in yawn, ya. Yeah.
Okay, so that's the Russian alphabet. And I know that you probably haven't memorized all of those sounds yet, but can you sort of read my shirt there a little bit? I'm gonna I'm gonna sound it up for you, see if you can figure out what it says. S P U T. Remember what letter the, the H says? I'm high on Nana N. So S P U T N. That's an E. You can't really see it, but it's E and then K. K. Sputnik. Sputnik. So that's what this little thing is, right? You've heard of that Sputnik, right? And if you don't know, Sputnik was the first man-made object to orbit the Earth entirely. Remember during the space race, the Russians and the Americans were competing for who could do all of these things first. The Russians were the first one to get a uh, man-made object in circumference the globe there. And the reason it has these little prongs coming out is because you know, the Russians said, hey, we're going to throw this up there in circumference of the world and we're going to be the first. Everyone's like, well, how are you going to prove that? You know, sure, you could say it, but how do you prove it? So what they did is they put these little beep, 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 beep. You hear that all the time in sp space movies and whatnot. Well, that's where it comes from is because they broadcast these signals and then all these radio stations throughout the world, when they sh put it up into the air, they could... Um, hone in to that signal and they knew that their signal only covered a certain distance and so it must truly be circumnavigating the entire globe. Pretty cool, huh? Go get the flashcards, memorize the alphabet. You're going to need this. If you're going to learn Russian, you got to know how to read Russian words and you got to know how to pronounce them correctly. Ну хорошо, это все сегодня. Спасибо и увидимся.